At the end of last year, I posted a simple survey in the community tab here on YouTube asking you guys which eyepiece series you would like me to review next. And the one with the most votes was the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium. Well, ask and you shall receive. Over the past two weeks, I have been testing the 24mm Hyperion and today I'm going to review it. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's see if it's worthy of being part of your eyepiece collection. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. Bader Planetarium is a German manufacturer of optical equipment for amateur and professional astronomers. The company was founded in 1966 by Klaus Bader and first started out by producing observatories for schools and universities. Later, they also started producing eyepieces and telescope accessories as well, which are known for both their good quality and modular design. One area where this is especially visible is the company's Hyperion lineup of eyepieces. It includes a total of nine eyepieces with fixed focal lengths starting from 5 mm and going all the way up to 36 mm for the aspherical 2 inch design. They all come with uh, a 68 degree apparent field of view, a generous 20 mm of eye relief and eight fully multi-coated lenses grouped into five elements. Completing the lineup is also um, a zoom eyepiece, the Hyperion Universal Zoom Mark IV, which offers great zoom capabilities and little compromises. I've reviewed this eyepiece a few months back and I encourage you to watch that review as well. I will leave a link in the description below for you to check out later. The 24mm Hyperion is the last eyepiece in its lineup that comes with a one and a quarter inch form factor. Although it can also be used as a two inch eyepiece without problems because the housing is designed to fit two inch focusers as well. As mentioned earlier, this eyepiece features eight lenses grouped into five elements, allowing for a focal length of 24 mm and a wide apparent field of view of 68 degrees. Remember when I said that all Hyperions come with 20 mm of eye relief? Well, I lied, sort of. Almost all Hyperions come with an eye relief of 20 mm. The 24 mm version is the exception. It only has 17 mm of eye relief, which is decent, but not great. Furthermore, the field stop is 28.5 mm in diameter. The relatively high number of lenses and the full metal body lead to a weight of 311 grams, which is on the heavier side when compared to other 24 mm eyepieces. But this isn't a problem as all telescopes should be able to handle the 24 mm Hyperion. While all these packs look good on paper, I'm certain you are interested in how the viewing experience through the 24mm Hyperion really is. But before we dive into that, here is a question for you. Do you know which eyepieces also share almost the same basic stats as the Hyperion? That's right. It's the 24mm Panoptic from Teleview and the 24mm 68 degrees from Explore Scientific. So how does the Hyperion compare to these two? Well, let's start with the image produced by the Hyperion. The field of view is flat, flatter than on the Explore Scientific and almost on the same level as the Panoptic, which is great. It's also very sharp right up to the edge of the field of view, which puts it on the same level as the other two. In terms of brightness and contrast, it lags a bit behind the panoptic. Here I would say that the image produced by the pano is 10 to 15% brighter and uh, with a bit more contrast, which truth be told, isn't a big difference with the Hyperion definitely being able to hold its own in a direct comparison. Observing through this eyepiece is comfortable enough, even though I wished for a bit longer eye relief. 
17 millimeters uh, with a 6 8 degree apparent field of view is barely enough if you are wearing glasses like myself. But here it fares better than the panoptic and it's 15 mm of eye relief and is basically on the same level as the Explore Scientific. Adding to the comfortable viewing experience is the generous 20 mm wide top lens, which invites you to look through and simply get lost in the night sky. And I enjoy this very much as the view was clear and without any internal reflections whatsoever. The company's proprietary anti-reflection coating called Phantom Coating does its job very well. The main characteristic is that it's almost colorless to the naked eye, which means that it's working across the entire visible spectrum, which also allows for good contrast. Even when looking at very bright targets, there weren't any distracting internal reflections noticeable. The interior of the eyepiece housing is also painted black and the edges of the lens elements are darkened as well, which also helps in this regard. Speaking of eyepiece housing, it's made completely out of aluminum, featuring a rubber grip ring and a foldable and removable eye guard. As mentioned before, the Hyperion has a decent weight, which conveys a solid feel when holding it in hand. Not quite premium, but definitely high quality. One of Bader's eyepieces biggest selling points always was the compatibility with almost any equipment piece you can think of, regardless if it's for visual observations or astrophotography and videography. You can even connect the Hyperion to your old handheld camcorder if you want, which is nuts. All this is possible by using different adapters made available by Bader Planetarium on their website. There is an adapter, an extender or lens for almost every situation. You just need to search for it. Talking about compatibility, the Hyperion also works well with Barlow lenses. I've tested it with my 2X Barlow from Teleview and didn't encounter any problems. For anyone interested in bino viewing, the Hyperion should work well with bigger binos such as the MaxBright 2 or the Mark V also from Bader Planetarium. Um, regarding MaxBright 2, it has a field stop of 26 mm, which is a bit narrower than the 28 0.5 mm of the Hyperion, resulting in a light vignetting effect around the outer edges of the field of view. But this shouldn't be very distracting, however, you should keep it in mind. Now, in order to give you guys a better understanding of what different objects in the night sky look like when viewed with this eyepiece, I've set up some views with help from Stellarium. Please keep in mind that these are simulated views and not actual views of the night sky. And this is only to give you a general idea of what the field of view is like. Coming in at 155 euros or roughly 175 US dollars, the 24 mm Hyperion eyepiece from Bader Planetarium is a fairly priced good eyepiece with quality optics and great compatibility with other accessories. The Hyperion is capable of delivering images that are almost as sharp and with as much contrast as the panoptic from Teleview and only shows its limitations when it comes to brightness. Other than this, the Hyperion is a very good all-rounder that will feel right at home in your eyepiece collection. So this was my opinion about the 24 mm Hyperion. And now I'm curious to find out what you guys think about this eyepiece and what are your experiences with the Hyperion lineup from Bader in general? Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's been it. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.